Hello, Mike Bradley. Hope you are doing well as always. So, get a cup of tea for this one. It's a long one. Uh, I recently went down to Monty's to see the lovely Matt at Monty's and all the gang there, George and everyone, uh, and got some new pickups for the Bradcaster. Uh, as the original pickups I had in it, um, when I started playing live a lot with it, I was noticing um, that when I was rolling the volume down on the single coils, it was losing a lot of top end. And the humbucker, if I used two overdrive pedals, would squeal like a pig, to pull it bluntly. Um, it, was, it was a bit of a pain. So I had a chat with Matt and he said, come on down and he's done a stellar job. So if you're into a hardcore geek guitar pickups tech stuff, you're really gonna love this. So uh, yeah, get a cuppa and uh, I'll see you at the end. Good morning. I am off for a two hour drive to uh, see good old Matt at Monty's to talk about pickups. Well, I've been to his house. I found, when I was in LA, we found his house and I climbed the tree, <laughs> the Peeping Tom tree, yeah. found that, which is the same road where um, Team Wolf was filmed. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, so it's all kind of there. Um, so yeah, and I've been to the, uh, the, the car park where he did it, you know. So when I was in LA a few years ago, we, uh, my, I met my brother out there and we just did a big geek kind of session. geek session, yeah. So um, if I was with a girl, that would never happen. Are <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go to this like mall? Yeah. And not go shopping? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they've had the sign in the mall, the Twin Pines Mall. Really? They've still got it in there. Oh, it's incredible, yeah. I love all that stuff. So it's looking... Oh, that's obviously for the push. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, not the push, sorry, the pull, yeah. That, those, those are kind of the best ones out there at the minute, to be fair. That's good to know. Dan did all right. That's yeah, good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy knows what he's doing. <laughs> no, he's a good egg. Let's whip these out. So one thing is, it's because you can see that the leads are left really long, mm -hmm. which is it's fine. But if you imagine all of this is basically it's like an an aerial for the pickup, so mm -hmm. more prone or likely to get more noise, which is why you should keep them ideally keep them short. Right, got ya. Well, it's like a pedal board, isn't it? Really short yeah, with the yeah. lead, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's all it's it's tiny <coughs> amounts, but you know it's like. I like to think of it as like a Formula One car, you know. Mm -hmm. so they get, they're all really fast, but they spend millions getting that balance of a second. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Although this is marginally cheaper. <laughs> Just a smidge. <laughs> Come on, let's get this. One day I will conquer soldering. When I solder, it's like it's always hit and miss. <laughs> it's, I got. I just envy people like well, it's practice, isn't it? It's like yeah, guitar yeah, or something, yeah, isn't it? Thing. But I, I got obsessed with it when I used to build. I worked with Jesse from Lazy J. Oh yeah, yeah. And, um, I for, from about 2010 to 2016, 17, mm -hmm. I built a large majority of the 20s. Oh wow! Yeah, so every week. Great yeah. amps, awesome amps, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get like the kit with the chassis and everything. I wouldn't do the box or anything, and Jesse would check everything. Yeah. But it was just I got so obsessed with everything being neat, and I liked yeah. it when you looked in the amp and it looked like there was nothing in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all and that's kind of. It's always yeah. carried on, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like all the looms and everything. Everything. I'm just like so pedantic about it. No, it's good. Well, mate, it's, it's paying off, so that's great. Every extra component that you put in in your guitar is going to have some sort of parasitic capacitance. Mm -hmm. That's a great word. Look at that, uh, eh? That's actually that's Steve Crow of Audio Kitchen uh, is the owner of that one. Okay. But, um, I don't know if he made it up or it's actually a phrase, but, but it basically it takes it you know adds resistance into the circuit, 
no matter, you know, tiny, tiny amounts, mm. but um, has an, you know, an overall effect. It's like the whole thing with the, like the 50s Les Paul wiring. Sure. Taking, because on a modern Les Pauls, they have tone control, the tone capacitor, so, goes to the input of the volume control, which is the same place that the, what the, the pickup itself goes to. Right. So that means that the pickup is always seeing the, the capacitor. Yeah, yeah. There's this, um, there's this like mid hump in there. I can't remember. What's his name? George? Yeah? What's the guy, his name's completely gone. That 90s effects company. They got him um, with the white bit in his hair. Uh, Dan Coggins. That's it. Yes, I've Dan heard Coggins. Of him, yeah. You ever heard of him? No, no, no. no. He's, he was um, Love Tone. I've heard of Love Tone. Yeah, 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 so yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was the brains behind it. Right. But I was having a chat with him about it. Yeah. And, I mean, it literally, I felt like, you know, Dave Grohl is in that Sound City film. He's oh, right, yeah, yeah. Rupert Nee, Robert Nee. And he's just, he's just like nodding. <laughs> Let's see how I felt. I was like, my, my sides level's quite, you know, it's literally kitchen sides. Really. Sure. He's like, oh no, because it would have a pump in the fre in this frequency because it sees this and it sees that and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a true thing. But if, mm. if you just, lots of guitars, you can make them sound infinitely better by literally just swapping where that tone capacitor goes to. Well, again, it's like you said, it's the little tiny things that all add up into one giant thing isn't it you know so it is uh is a mate especially when it comes you know there was the tone tone searchers tone hunters kind of thing and it is yeah. like eric johnson sitting there changing one minute little thing and then all of a sudden yeah. boop. refrigerating his past faces and stuff that's right he does isn't he yeah or it did or it does i don't know and his batteries and all that malarkey <laughs> you cool for me to change the mate i'm i'm cool for you doing anything absolutely so okay give me a note this is a 47, which kind of traditionally, that's what they had, but mm -hmm. lower one sound better, a 2.2 two, or even a 15 sounds great in the strap. Okay. Because a 47, it just gives you a more usable sweep because there's very few times you find that you actually roll the tone off fully. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's yeah. like a minute amount. So if you shorten that range, you still got all of that sweep. Yeah, yeah. More minute amounts. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, with a tone, very rarely do you go past seven unless you want to do sweet child of mine. Exactly. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Cool. So that's all. That's all tidy up. So that can be cleaned up. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Magnets. See, <laughs> so look, if this wasn't all uh, colour coded, you wouldn't know where to go. You'd be. Well, look, even, the, even the magnets are colour coded. So. Genius. Yeah. But how long did it take you to do all this? A long time. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. From the off, from, from the off these were always. I always kind of called. <laughs> Because my kid, my, my boy Ben, was just born when I right. started doing all this stuff. Oh wow! So, lots. I was surrounded by a lot of things like Thomas the Tank Engine, etc. So, because I, you know, my brain's a little bit wonky. So you've got on Eco Fives. They're pink magnets, but they're called Gordons because he's a big, strong engine. Yeah, of course. We've got on Eco Fours. This is brilliant. Which is the blue. But that's called Thomas. Brilliant, they're, yeah. They're super. He's a useful engine. <laughs> you've got our, we've got our Nico sixes here, which we only use, these, we use these in our Bill Steer humbuckers. But that's they're called James because he's like a cheeky man. Right, right. And we've got the little uh, our Nico twos, which are called Percy's because he's like a little bit weak, you know. I remember Percy. I used to love yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> God, <laughs> man, this is just a trip down memory lane today so far. Yeah, yeah. This is great. <laughs> but do you know what the the Alnico 2s or Percy magnets work great in bridge pickups. They right. Because they're not so, they haven't got as much output, but it means you can get the pickup itself closer mm -hmm. to the string. Mm -hmm. You get the pickup then sees more movement and starts, Interesting. Like, and starts in, um, affecting it. All that kind of crazy stuff. It's all cool. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> very, very cool. A little jig that we use for all the, um, like the path humbucker things. Mm. The, these bobbins fit in. These are our path bobbins. Nice. They're made out of this weird plastic. Smell that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like feet. Yeah. But literally, you put this into here, and then you've got this little attachment that goes in there. You put the slugs in like that, and then you pest them all down. So everything's done a lot quicker. But this, I've got to do it old school. <laughs> Bless you. I've been lazy and haven't got a jig yet. Oh, uh, well, yeah, so lazy. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, yeah I, one of the other things, actually, it was my first lockdown purchase. Um, was a 3D printer. I was like, right. I'm oh gonna, wow, yeah, yeah. Get, get they're not, they're not cheap, are they? Do you know it's not bad? Oh, all right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not cheap, cheap, cheap. But the one I got was like 1,200 quid. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah. It's like things like this. This saves so much time. It means we can get of a more accuracy and everything. Yeah. And then we got jig, you know, winders for the jigs, jigs to make. Like this, I made it one for so you can build a pedal. So this is our little. A little more, a little more. Sorry, I literally called that little more. Yeah, little yeah more, nice. Yeah. So you literally you can put all the components in. They slot in. This one still needs a bit chicken around. Sure. But then you can wire it up outside the box and then put it into the enclosure, so wow. the enclosure doesn't get you don't run it into it, scratching it, all that kind of thing. And that's yeah. That's well, it saves time. So in the long run, you're gonna get that money back. You no, know, in the long run, kind of thing, isn't it? You know. But more than that, it's fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> Because the pickup itself is kind of together. It's got the magnets in there. You've got the maple spacer and the keeper bar underneath. Mm -hmm. um, and they that supports the bobbins, which keeps them nice and level. So now with this, because it's going to be a four conductor, so we can split it and do all that. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're doing is you're taking the start and finish of each coil and then linking them out so you can uh, manipulate them at the other end. And that's literally it. Wow. So the vintage style braided um, humbuckers, you'll see the cover like a, well, a braided wire yeah. that comes out of that. And what that is, is basically the braid is attached to ground, which is then attached to one end of the pickup. And then the two coils are joined together internally, and then you've got a live output, so you can't do anything with it apart from run it as full. Um, I mean, I'm sure there is maybe some slight sonic difference, but I I can't hear it myself. Right, right, right. But, um, as I said, and that's saying something then, if that's the yeah, case, you know. Yeah. As I said earlier, I mean, everything makes a difference, but with this, I think n not really, not really so much. Um, although other people may say otherwise, and I'm ha I'll be happily proved wrong. Mm -hmm. well, and they, the, the biggest judge is the ear, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? This. Um... And and yeah, it's all it's all subjective, and also there's there's a massive like your your, your mental state plays a massive part in yeah, it. Yeah. So if you can. So if your guitar is set up nicely, it's gonna, it'll be nicer to play, mm -hmm. and therefore you're gonna have a more play, pleasant playing experience. So the you know stuff that comes out of it will be nicer, all that kind of thing. We'll, you know, this stuff, it's the heat shrink. Yeah, you know, 
to heat that up, that shrinks down and isolates all of the oh, okay. Brilliant. joints, so that's all safe. All of these little things, eh? Yeah. All adds up to what, as we said earlier, all adds up to one big thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Cool, and they get tucked in under here. Just gotta get some pickup tape and then we can get that all done. I'm loving as well that you've got a Makika drill. Yeah, man. It's like Paul Gilbert's in the room, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's it, a, a Do you sometimes just sit, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, my hair. No, they're good, man. Also, it looks like a stormtrooper should use it. It does a little bit, yeah. Mixing everything better. The tone is in the drill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we um, went there. I remember when, my, when I used to work with Jesse and doing the Lazy J stuff, and he was like teaching me, I used to go down to his house in just outside Guildford. Yeah and sit next to him in his spare room and build the amps next to it, next to each other. And he'd get the chassis of the, the J and he had to, because it was like really heavily modified, he had to drill loads of holes in mm -hmm. it. And then you had to smooth them off because there was loads of like swarf and metal bits out. So he got a Dremel with like a grinding thing on the end of it. And um, he would put it on full and then just shave it all down and you'd get this horrible ear piercing, piercing noise. And then he'd stop and turn to me and go, that's the tone of a joke. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, god damn it. I love it. We're just all really bad geeks. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's like, like, yeah, your humor oh, is strong. Yeah, is that, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So, dear. What cup, cup do you want on that? Um, I suppose similar to. Yes, it's like, similar. I know what, it's funny. I used to always prefer like no cover. Okay. But I think on a shirt it just seems to work with a cover, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Um, it's, it's funny how it's shiny. Yeah, exactly, you know. As long as it looks cool, that's yeah. what matters. <laughs> this thing has been an absolute lifesaver. It's actually from Stuart McDonald. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because before I found this, I had to literally put a flat bladed screwdriver into a drill and then do that so they make these go in. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that would slip off mm -hmm. and go into my palm or something. Oh shit. It was so now we have this and you know there's a lot less bloodshed. Because <laughs> <laughs> this plastic's a lot harder than the stuff that the pap we make paps out of. Oh okay. We've had to make it F spaced. Yeah. Oh of course yeah yeah. <laughs> I can see what you mean about your palm. Yeah, God, so yeah, yeah. Off. And the thing is, you'd never stop it spinning, so it'd be like. <laughs> oh my God. Fucking painful. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how we get the covers on nice and tight, because especially if we're not not potting, we're using really light potting. You need the cover to be really tight on there, because otherwise it will just act like a bell. Mhm. Mm um, so slam that down, and then let's just solder it on. It's. I mean, this is high tech. As high tech as it comes. Yeah, you can't get any more high tech than this. NASA's got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and then, so I don't heat, heat the cover and the base plate up for a bit, and then put the solder onto the soldering iron itself. And what we're looking for is the bottom of the blob of solder to start opening out. Mm -hmm. and that means it's actually taken to the metal. Right. The annoying thing is sometimes it will take to the base plate like it has done here slightly before the cover because again all the metal acts like a big heat sink so it's kind absolutely of way yeah that's that is that uh, done noise I'm very therapeutic yeah, man. watching that. <laughs> and finally just tighten these up a little bit so everything, you want all the components to be really locked together. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. That's that Shiny. Thing. Shiny. You just got to level up, level up the screws, put a decal on it, obviously check it, make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> This morning, I had to wire up a strap um, 
and I wired it up, the wired the switch up the wrong way around. I've been doing this for 21 years, <laughs> so I still do it. It is morning, you got yeah, to allow yourself, you know, you're still waking up. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's the official wiring expert at Monty, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> cool. Just get some decals. Fantastic. It's like, like your old Airfix. Decals. Yeah, right. It's exactly the same way. Um, so it's all been in the water. Get it on. Now they never. <laughs> oh, they're They pain. never yeah. come out straight. But to be honest, the, if you look at paths, I mean, sometimes they in the old pickups, the decals yeah. over here, over, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, they just stamp them on, didn't they, yeah. back then? It was just like, get them out the door. Absolutely, yeah. It's, and if any with the whole vintage stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, it was just so quick, and, you know, yeah. done by you know, Mexican housewives. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're the extortionate amount of money. Have I spoken, spoken to you about this before? No. This is a, it's a motorbike polish. Okay. But it's like the best guitar polish you'll ever ever find. Muck off. Muck off, yeah. You put it on the back of your neck. I'll, sh I'll show you on your Yeah, yeah, please. That'd be great, yeah. It's literally, it'll be like... Of course it's pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt does like a pink. <laughs> it smells good too. But yeah, literally, polishes up everything. Oh, wow. I, just, I ran out of... Um, I can't remember what I was using at the time, like Jim Dunlop or something. Yeah. And um, I had all my bike cleaning stuff because I sold my bike to fund, oh, got, yeah. start, fund start this, this mm. thing. So I had all the cleaning stuff and I was just like, well, I'll give it a go. Give it a go, I've got it here, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it came out really nice. Wow. Muck off. Miracle shine. There you go, kids. And that whole thing's, I don't know, 15 quid or something. You know, a guitar polish oh. that size. It's Triple just, it, yeah, yeah. Cool, makes everything shiny. It smells nice, yeah, yeah it does, yeah. yeah. That's smell a vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, so when we do repairs and stuff for people, I want the whole experience to be yeah. good. Yeah, so. well even like your packaging, I love yeah. your, it's brilliant, you know, That's and good. it's just going above and beyond a bit more, you know. Well, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a thank you. I mean, like, how yeah. many times have you bought a pedal or mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. you spent hundreds of pounds on it mm -hmm. and it arrives literally just the pedal no instructions yeah. and just like yesterday's chip wrappings or something yeah and it's yeah. just like you know the pedal is you're buying the pedal mm -hmm. but it's you want you want everything that somebody is somebody involved in your company you want them to experience all the good stuff can't right? agree more yeah, yeah absolutely and that's it so it's you know it's a thank you for mm. Me. No, it's great. No, it's just um, well, it sets you apart. I, I think you know. Well, I think what, lots more people are doing decent. Probably could have copied you. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that, but you know, I think no. I think it's good. It's good, and it shows that people people are making the stuff also care about the people care about yeah it, buying yeah the stuff yeah. yeah. Um, because it's the people that buy our stuff that keep you know my literally keep my kids in shoes absolutely and keep me. And you know, and these guys allow me to do this, mm -hmm, which, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Very cool. That's amazing. It's the only time you get to clean a pick up. I was gonna say, yeah, this is it hasn't been cleaned in a year. <laughs> so go. Right. Just got to flip the polarity of that, so I've got the stuff to do that. Wiki, wiki. Well, that smell is it's, it's, it's addictive, actually, yeah. isn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is make these reverse wound, reverse polarity, or yeah. yeah. Try to say that. So what we, the neck on this, I have, I've got to flip it. So the neck is well, it's just pointing to north. You can see that on the compass. Yeah. And so is the middle. But what we want to do is flip it around so it's south. And literally, all I've got here, this is like you know, Heath Robinson style. <laughs> got two rare earth magnets. And all you do is you literally pass this through it like that. Okay. A times, and now it should. It's the south going there, and you want the south to point to the middle of the pickup. If it points slightly out one way, it means that right. one, of the pick, one of the magnets is not flipped. Oh wow! Okay. So kind of. It's really. And just by doing that, just yeah, changes yeah, yeah, yeah. it ever so slightly. You can change it. Change it back. Like really simple. There you go. Oh wow! So that's that's all that is. I mean, I'm sure there's a fancy machine we can get to do it, but you know. You go to Seymour Duncan, he's got his like. But this is the hand built way, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. This is, you can't get more hand built than this, can you? <laughs> yeah. 
One day, one day I'll get into the 21st century. I'm nah, mate. There's nothing wrong with being 90s, 80s kids, as we yeah. were discussing earlier. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Because that's that sorted. So now we can chuck them in. Get it all wired up. Excellent. Going to swap what you've got in had in there before is yes. the rubber stuff, which is what they used to use in the 60s. Yeah. But I prefer having springs in, which gives it slightly less pressure. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it means the pickup moves around a little bit, so you get more of the kind of nice harmonics around the note, a bit more of this bloom thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, tidy percent. Tight, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's all all adds up. Yeah, absolutely. So let's find some springs. <laughs> Well, it'd be in the pink or green tray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's like literally, you know, this is like God knows how much money's worth of springs. I, mean, I, I remember when I started, I'd literally buy, buy them in packs of six. There you go. <laughs> in, yeah, this is crazy. It's crazy. Sometimes you kind of sort of take a breath. It's like, how the hell did I get here? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I think it's amazing. Oh, this is a cool thing actually. We just had these made because we used to use these Russian caps, and um, they're basically just getting harder, to, harder to find. Yeah. They sound amazing. They're getting harder to find. So for the last few years, we've been working with this guy to make these. These are our cap caps because they got a cap on them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that. In You're gonna focus on me. Come on now. There we go. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's that, and like Monty's on there. Brilliant. That's it. That's the main one. So these are. These are oil sealed caps, so they literally they'll last forever. I can't remember what the actual term is. It. What's the term for these caps? Hermetically sealed. Sorry, what's that? What's oh, the those yeah, they're paper in one, but they're hermetically sealed. Hermetically Hem sealed. That's, that's a word I'm not even going to try and yeah, pronounce. Yeah. It's, it's way above my paper. <laughs> it means they basically they they're going to last forever. So I was like super excited when these turned out. I've always wanted to have my own capacitors. Absolutely. So here it just. What I like to do is prep the pot before I solder to it. So mm -hmm. you've got all the sort of the solder dots or blobs, whatever you want to call them. That's already on there, and then you just heat the wire up, put a tiny bit more solder on, and you can keep everything really nice and neat. And nice. Because as I said earlier, you don't want you want everything to be just sort of just enough. You don't want any excess wire or. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. We'll get this all get this all wired up and be together. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Of course, this is just tidying up the ends. To yeah. Nothing. Again, it's, maybe it's a bit overkill, but it's like the pedant in me. No, that's so great. Yeah, yeah. Be. Cool. So these are all the coil wires. This one here is the the actual ground for all the metal work. Mm -hmm. So once that's grounded, we can then sort of do what we want. So we'll coil tap it. I'm going to do that via a, a resistor. So what that does, instead of dumping all of one of the coils to ground, it dumps most of it. Right. And what that does is it balances it better with the single coils because it's got more output there. Which gives you more usable sound. Wicked. It's always nice to have a usable sound, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get it done. That's there. Push that in, keeping it nice and away. Shouldn't worry about cooking the pot or anything. Mm -hmm. You have to go really hot to do that. So leaving it on for 30 seconds is not a problem. Pushing that all down. So that. Right. So that when the switch engages it's yep. gonna send Oh. One of the coils via this resistor to ground, so you'll still get a nice sort of chunky sure, yeah. thing going on. There's so much neater now. Look at that. So we got the two. This this is basically these two wires. They're kind of the finishes finish finish on both both of the coils. Mm -hmm. So this is what on a regular two conductor humbucker. This which is those would just be wired together. What we're going to do here is wire this to the pot, which then that will dump to ground, so that it's actually dumping this second coil to ground, so it won't see as much live. 
Does that make sense? Does that make sense? A little bit. <laughs> Again, 1.21. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, all yeah. goes in my head. <laughs> yeah. oh, you are the. You, that's what you are. You're like the dot brown of pickups. That's really cool. Do you know what a mate of mine did a writing session with him, with Christopher Law. Oh, amazing! Was, I don't know when it was. It must have been back in like the noughties or something. Yeah. And he was doing some crazy songwriting session. A guy called Duck Blackwell. And, um, Duck Black, that's yeah, a name, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, I, mean, I mean, he's he's genius. Like, he, he used to be, in, he was the keys, keys player in my old function band. And mm. he, he he could make tracks up like that. You know, he's just really talented. Yeah. yeah. He said he was Christopher Lloyd was just. I don't know if he was, he was on anything or something really bonkers. <laughs> just absolutely mental. <laughs> That's what but you want him to be. Yeah, if he, he wasn't, I'd be like something's not. You've got to yeah. be like Dot Brown. You know, yeah. Maru. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, no, no. Cool. So that's that, and hopefully this will be in phase. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about three, three fives earlier, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, at least it's not quite as bad as that. No. So we're in this. You make it look so easy. It takes me a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually, you know, this is just lots of practice. Yeah, of course. It, again, practice. it's like playing guitar or anything, anything you know, yeah. editing or whatever is practice, isn't it? Yeah, rinse and repeat. It's yeah. literally that simple. Especially if you're doing uh, amps with Jesse for so long, you know, you, yeah. you get, if you don't get good at it, something's wrong. Yeah, he's, he's a hard taskmaster, that boy. I bet he is. You know. Well, again, the product kind of pays for that, you know what I mean? Amazing amps. I remember seeing one of the other things that got me kind of obsessed with the neatness in all this crazy stuff. Was if you, if, you know Tyler guitars? Oh, that. James Tyler. Yeah, 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 yeah of course, yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever look inside his, it's exactly like that. He doesn't use any of the cloth wire. He uses um, like a different type of, um, different type of wire. But mm. Everything is exactly where it should really? be. Really? Each connection's got its own sort of solder dot and all that. Right, right, so right. That's, that way, I mean, I th whether it's just in my head or whatever, but it's so much easier to see if something's wrong and if something's of course. where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, they're great guitars. Yeah. Uh, I, I play a few. I remember my mate fell in love with the Mike Landau model one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, I forgot what shop we were in now, but it's about three and a half grand. Yeah. But he was like, I can't afford it, but I really, really yeah. like it. <laughs> That's what I'd be. I'm still like that. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. They're pretty. But then again, you play that next to, like I say, a Fender. There's a, like, why does this feel different? Mm. And that's, like you say, what like we've been saying you know, this afternoon, like all the little things just add up. Yeah. To the big things, so yeah, they're incredible guitars. I love the story, and whether it's true or not, I heard a story that he, the reason the whole you know, that like psychedelic vomit and the, oh, yeah, all those weird colors, yeah, it was literally just as a joke for Landau. It's oh, really? Like, guitar, just like you know, did whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he came up with all this stuff. I love those, films. I think they're cool. I remember, um, oh, god bless him, Mike Caswell. Remember Mike Caswell, yeah, 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 yeah bless him. And but I remember he had one of those. Yeah, ones yeah, you know, yeah. but they're saying about they're cool. They're yeah. saying about them. Yeah. Wanted, there's one called Burning Water. Yes. Which is like yes. Red, yeah, red, gold, and silver and black. Yeah. And it looks really cool. I like them. Yeah. But yes, they're, they're, they're a few pennies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to work a bit harder. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, that was the same. Him and um, and Anderson guitar. Oh yeah, Tom Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Tom Anderson. I mean, he they the construction on their stuff. They've got me obsessed with like how the fret ends are on guitars, yeah. the edges of the fingerboards yeah, and stuff. Because yeah. they were just like next level. Um, they're really cool. This should fit. <laughs> <laughs> he says. So it's the table where it's just got some earth 
this side. These down. That's another little tip actually. Mm. <laughs> when you're soldering, always move whatever you're soldering to. So your hands are kind of working in the same position at all times. Right. Makes sense. It makes it so much easier because otherwise you're kind of doing this. Sure, yeah, yeah. But you've always got your stuff at the same angle. So that's where being left hand is a pain because yeah. I do solder with left hand yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like cack handed kind of thing, you know. So hopefully the cap cap is loaded. Now it's got to wire that back up to the switch and we're good to go. I love that, this is, you got your smile on the shot there. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a new retro wine pickups, but the, the whole thing about the retro wine series is it's like taking the vintage stuff, which is great, but there are some inherent problems with them sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like with the Telecasters, for example, our retro wine telly set is based on a 68 telly set. Right. But the next one tip on 68 is slightly woolly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, sometimes they don't cut through in a mix. Mm -hmm. And that's like my main bugbear with pickups and there's always got to be those frequencies there. Yeah. And the bridges, again, sound great, but can be a little bit piercing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also because they lack a pot of them, the base plates are microphonic as hell. So you get loads of squeal. So yeah, I know that. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah. So that's the idea behind that. So this is like taking I kind of 60, the 60s vibe, which is, you know, nice and fat and rich. Yeah. But getting, you're getting the, the tops a little bit more clear, getting a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. Because one thing with always single pull pickups, you know, this magnet stagger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that actually doesn't, it doesn't give you the most even tone. It, can, it kind of makes the highs jump out or some bits will jump out. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially with string gauges nowadays, you don't necessarily need that. Sure, sure, so yeah. Flatten the magnets off and we've done a few things so to make it a little bit better. Just that little bit. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> hey, Matt, again, that's, I think that's the motto of the. We should get it on a t shirt, shouldn't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just, a little, Just a little bit. Yeah, when I started with Charlie Chandler, he's like, I was, my first thing was basically I operated the Fleck machine and then mm. could do little bits around the shop. And he gave me this. Tatty old thing. Back in 1975. <laughs> 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 and I've been using this. Yeah. It's, it's really weird though. It's because I, I can't I kind of get panicky if I haven't got it. I lost it once and like lost my shit. <laughs> oh mate, I'm the same with bits and bobs like that. Yeah, you do. You get attached to things. It's like no, that's my thing. That's the special one. Yeah, I can't do it without it. I mean, I can, but so this is just taking the edge off the frets to make oh, you want it so you can feel the frets but you don't want to speak of course yeah 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 get caught and as the strings are off and everything mm -hmm. opportunity to do it Oh yeah. Yes, yeah. Brilliant. 
This reminds me of my dad's toolbox. Yeah, I was thinking my granddad and all stuff like that, yeah. And they brought the retro tins out. Oh, have they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they have that, yeah, yeah. It's a show you obviously had to get. So it's, all, it's all circle, isn't it? It comes back round, you know. Yeah. That's why I don't like throwing anything away. It's like, now I've been fashion again in about 10 years' time. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget an, an old New York t shirt my uncle got me when I was about 12. You know, yeah. just, it's just a white t shirt, New York, yeah. uh, on it. And then fast forward 15 plus years later, I was in Top Shop in Oxford Street and saw the same t shirt for £45. Jesus. I was like, you. I, I've got that in a drawer at my mum somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just all comes back again. So keep that DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cool, man. <laughs> and my plane mobile. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, as the strings are up, just take the opportunity to condition the board. So this is like, this is our instrument food. I'll use it in mugs because I use a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it comes in tins like this. You Brilliant. It's like that. Instrument food. Yeah, all good. But it's, it's just it's all it's beeswax and a few oils and stuff. Mm -hmm. What it does is it kind of gets into the tubes and the, the wood's made up from, kind of and seals it, um, so that it stays conditioned for longer. Sure. It doesn't seal it like a finish it kind of you know so you can it will come out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can see how kind of rich and all the grain really pops after you used it no it really does yeah, yeah. hopefully that's coming through on the can yeah there we go sexy yeah it's all about looking cool isn't it <laughs> yeah don't know what it sounds like nah. yeah so just whilst the pit cards off Yeah, you can really see that tan. Yeah, it's starting I mean, to come now, isn't it? Yeah. Starting. Looking good. All okay. oh, about the nitro. Yeah, really. You see that? Oh really wow, you can, up. yeah. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, unfortunately, but it's hard. It's subtle, but. Yeah, yeah. I say the fact that it's a year, yeah. Um, you know, and I kind of got started gigging it, uh, or whenever gigs opened, you know, early this year, mate. Right, so let's plumb it back in. This is string ground. So that's the bit that links the strings to all the electronics. Mm -hmm. Why, when you put your hands on the strings, that that's. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to be an Indian dog to do this. <laughs> George um, has been on a a strap quest, so he's got this strap which is all, all parts parts, mm -hmm. he's put together and um, I mean it sounds great, it's really nice and resonant but he's been messing around with pickups, so he's got our uh, full Monty strats so our sort of higher output mm -hmm. ones, but I mean, they're higher output but they aren't sort of, don't pummel the front end of your right. so they're still really dynamic, Yeah. but um, we've been mucking around with base plate thickness, oh, okay, yes, yeah. and wiring and different options and stuff, Yeah. and it's it's been it's been really cool because he'll like mess around with over the weekend whilst I'm not here. He'll yeah. come back and be like, "Look at this! Look at what I've done!" Yeah. <laughs> so like with, what first thing he did was put five hundred k pots in, so two fifty, which like opened up the top end like that. And really? It's, you know, it's it's incredible. And then put the base plates on, and then put a double thick one, which um, so they're normally about one mil bit over that, mm -hmm. so another two mil one on mm -hmm. bridge pickup, which again just fattened it up a little bit wow. more. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know how it works, really. It, but it works. It works. Yeah, so some, yeah. Something happens there and it's, it's really cool. So now I'll get, go, you can have a go on it. Like, oh, please, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like a, it's a monster strap. It's really cool. Wow. So all that, sort of that, I mean, cluck's not the best word, but that kind of 
glassy time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with I mean it's you know it's got huge cojones Wow, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a because again you think oh Strat's a Strat or Teddy yeah. or Les Paul, but again as we've been saying the whole time these little changes here and there, yeah. so that's why I think it's great when you oh just by changing the wire with the base plate yeah, that yeah. seems to be a very important thing it, it makes not makes or break but changes tone so much, doesn't the it? Original Strat was actually designed with three base plates on all the pickups. Oh, was it really? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Don't know why they did it. I mean, I'm guessing it's like a cost saving thing. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. But it, it does it does make a difference. Wow, That's really cool. So you've got 500k pots in there, right? So that's going to open out the tone a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, we've got rid of the resistors that we're turning them down to 250, which is going to help keep the single cores nice and nice and bright. Yeah. We've taken the change the tone cap, lower the value of that, so that should give you a more usable sweep, but also wired it like a sort of 50s Les Paul. Yeah. So that again, oh, but, yeah. make it more, a little bit more interactive. Yeah, yeah, nice. And fingers, toes and other bits and bobs, yeah. Crossed should sound pretty good if I can fit the thing in. This is, this is when I this is when I moved to Matthew. <laughs> um, regarding the pickup height, what's your view? Do you, is it like literally? Because I saw you there just kind of playing a note and trying to obviously you're hearing a certain harmonic frequency and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the kind of secret to it? To yeah. So what you can't there's, there is no um, like definite size or definite sort of um, position for them. Yeah. They're all because it depends on your well the, the strength of the magnet. How thick your strings are, all yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. uh, and what tuning you play in. Mm -hmm. Basically, what you what you've got to work out is where the ceiling of the, the pickup is. So for this, what I'm trying to do now, you again always start on the neck pickup when you do mm -hmm. your pickup. So you can hear that it's a nice mm -hmm. solid tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we raise it up, can you? Hit, I don't know if it's coming across. Yeah. But, Listen for the notes literally getting compressed and it's also wobbling a little bit. Because the, the, these magnets aren't very strong, uh -huh. it's not so it doesn't happen so much. Can you hear that wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like a little tremolo kind of. Yeah, um... yeah. So we'll, then we're going to drop it down until that goes away. That's that's as high as you can get the pickup. Right. So that, but that might not necessarily be the best sound mm -hmm. with your setup. Mm -hmm. but you, literally, you can't take it any higher, but you can drop it lower. Right. So literally playing around with that. Once you've got the neck pickup playing, sounding how you like it, mm -hmm. then match up the other ones to it. Got ya. Got ya. And the reason you start with the neck pickup is because the string here this moves more easily here. So. It means that the magnets are going to affect it more because it it doesn't take as much energy to move a pit, uh, move a string here as it does to move sure. one here. Sure. Yeah, that makes that sense. Makes yeah, sense. yeah. So start with the neck and then make make your way back. Nice and in tune. Thing with those. Uh, Vintage type. I think they look so much cooler about the truss rod, but I always worry. I'm like, don't move neck because yeah. change. Oh, it's a pain yeah. in the bum. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I like about tellies because you've got the pick guard. You take the pick guard off, and there's a little gap there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the amount of old straps you see with. Um, I remember seeing uh, Scott McEwen's, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's got a little <laughs> little gash there. You know, same with Roy Gallic, All those guys, aren't they? Little <laughs> little smash in there. I'm sure eventually that will have to happen with that. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll get it. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm sure once a fly gig, uh, a flight gig. Comes in, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, gotta take the neck off. <laughs> yeah, so now with the, the, the with the new tone setup, it only gets really woofy. It's still cut there. That's at like what three? Four? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. But if you take it right back off, so you've got that kind. Yeah, of, yeah. It just gives having the lower value just gives you much more usable sound. Sounds. Nice. What's it like? Yeah. So, what's it like when you uh, with the split? Yeah. Oh, that's nice.
<laughs> Go on then. So, our first time, it's been the match show so far. I just feel like I don't think I've been on camera yet. Um, but uh, I've just, I've been noodling away for it for a couple of minutes. And it's, it's all right, mate, actually. It's not, it's not too shabby. It's all right. Check <laughs> I can it. say anything I want now. <laughs> but uh, the main issues um, I was having before was that they were sounding great on 10. <laughs> But when I, sorry, it's like that tune, but the string's just going on. But when I was knocking it back to clean it up, um, a lot of the top end was kind of going, and some of the life of the pickup was going, wasn't it? I was saying. Mm. And, um, <laughs> and now um, it's kind of back, you know? Um, and also, this, the, the, the bridge pickup, uh, when the tone's down to about five, six. gigging it on the weekend and then um, we can see how it all Pants goes in but so far man uh, again I'm not just saying it I think it's I think it's very really nice You're beautiful beautiful soul in many ways <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure sir yeah see I say what was that on seven obviously we're quite quiet aren't we I'm really, really happy with the pickups in it now. Um, they sound great. I've done quite a few gigs with it as well, and actually many, many gigs. So I'll do a separate video talking about the sounds and all that kind of stuff, because this video is very, very long. If you've made it to the end of this, I applaud you <laughs> wholeheartedly. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And a massive thanks to the guys at Monty's as well. Matt in, in particular, he's done a stellar job. And actually I should say, uh, what I'm going through right now is the more pedal, uh, which they kindly uh, put in a bag for me. I turn it off. It's really cool. I'll do another video talking about that. It's really, really cool. Uh, anyway, the Bradcaster. I think after a year in, we are finished. So, um, but like I say, I'll do a video going through all the sounds um, in, a, in, you know, a couple of weeks or something so you can hear it and uh, yeah, it's, I love it. Anyway guys, hope you're very good and well. I'll see you very soon. I've been Mike Bradley, you've been you. I'll see you in the next video. Mike Bradley signing out. Bye. Feed